in this example, we're given we have a particle inside an infinite square well, and then this particle has an initial wave function that looks something like this. So if you graph this, you'll see that this initial wave function is actually a parabola because this is actually just a quadratic graph from 0 to 8. And it's going to be 0 everywhere else. So we want to find the wave function of this particle. So not just the initial wave function, so the one with the t component. And then we know that we can express the wave function in such a form, which is something we have derived through the separation of variables. And then because the particle is inside the infinite square well, we know that this xi n is equal to this expression over here, n pi divided by ax. So now we would like to find what the cn should be. So this entire expression, this is the general solution. But now we would like to find the particular solution where this initial condition is satisfied. And we can satisfy this initial condition by locking down these constants over here. And before we do that, we need to find what this a should be. So we can deduce what this a should be by using the fact that this wave function should be normalized. And when I say that uh, this function is normalized, that means this integral over here is equal to 1. So all we have to do now is just to solve this integral. So this is actually just rather a rather simple integral. So minus 2ax plus x squared dx a squared. So if a squared x squared, so integrating that, that just becomes a squared x to the power 3 minus, uh, divided by 3. You have 2ax to the power of 3, so that just becomes 2ax to the power of 4 divided by 4 plus x to the power of 5 divided by 5. And now you can just substitute everything. You see that each term has an a to the power of 5 attached to it. So you have 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2 because we have 2 over 4 plus 1 over 5. So this actually just becomes 1 over 30. So let's just do some primary school math. So this becomes 10, this becomes 15, and this becomes 6. So you see that it's equal to 1 over 30. So if the left hand side is equal to 1, the right hand side is equal to the absolute value of a squared times a to the power of 5 divided by 30. So you see that uh, a squared is actually equal to 30 divided by a to the power of 5. So we know that we can choose this constant to be equal to the square root of 30 divided by a5. And under this choice, the initial wave function would be normalized. So now we know that our wave function looks something like this. So x times a minus x. So this is our initial wave function. So now we would like to find what this cn should be. And then, as, is, as was in the case in the earlier videos, using the fact that these xi n's are mutually orthogonal if the subscript is different, we know that xi, uh, cn could be found using this formula over here. So you have your initial wave function times xi n dx. So this would correspond to the expression for cn. So now we would like to solve this integral to find what cn should be. And once we found cn, we can just substitute it back into this expression over here. And the final result will be the wave function that satisfies this uh, initial wave function for a particle inside the infinite square well. So now let's focus on this integral over here. So we see that cn is just equal to the integral. So first we have the initial wave function. We can just substitute that right inside. And we have x a minus x. And then we multiply this by xi n. So xi n is equal to 2 over a sine n pi divided by a x dx. So let's just pull these constants out. So we have square root of 60. Actually, I can express this as uh, 2 times the square root of 50. And then we have a to the power of 6. That just becomes a to the power of 3 because of the square root. So let's just pull these constants out. And then inside, in the inside the, of the integral, you have these two terms over here. You have sine times n pi divided by ax minus x squared times sine n pi divided by ax dx. Uh, so it seems like I left out an a, so there should be an a over here. So you see that now it just essentially becomes a math problem. We need to solve this integral. And then you can see that there are actually two components. We have this x sine 
and pi divided by ax dx. And then we also have this x squared sine n pi divided by ax dx. So now we need to solve these two integrals. So if you're lazy, you can always look just look up, uh, look up these integrals, but let's just try to solve them. So now let's just focus on this one first. And then once we found our results, we can just substitute it right back into the right back into this integral over here. So let's now let's focus on this. And we can solve this using integration by parts. So when we do by parts, we just integrate this expression, which just becomes negative cosine. As, and for convenience sake, let's just let n pi divided by a be equal to k. So like that I can save a bit of time writing out these constants. So sine just becomes negative cosine kx divided by k. So that's just integrating sine kx. And then we substitute in the bounds. And then minus 0 to a. And then we inter uh, differentiate the x over here. So this is just standard integration by parts procedure. So this negative sign it goes away. And when you substitute k uh, a inside, you have negative a cosine a k divided by k. And on, on this integral over here, we get sine kx divided by k squared, 0 to a. And then you see that when you substitute in a, you just get sine ka, and ka is just equal to n pi. So sine n pi is equal to 0 because sine pi, sine 2 pi, sine 3 pi, sine 4 pi, they're all equal to 0. And then when you substitute in 0, of course, sine 0 is just 0. So this whole term here is just equal to 0. So this is what this integral is equal to. So we found that this integral over here is equal to negative a cosine a k divided by k. So now let's focus on the second integral. So now let's focus on this integral over here. 